So historically, um, resection of stage four melanoma is in the eye of the beholder. And prior to any effective systemic therapy, patients were often offered to surgeons to see if they would be resectable because simply there was not a lot else to offer these patients rather than clinical trials or DTIC that had a very low chance of, of resulting in a complete response. So in that case, before 2010, it was surgery, surgery, surgery where possible. And we knew that with surgery, we could, in a small group of patients, a maximum of about 20%, give them long-term survival. So that was the historical approach. So with the discovery of immune checkpoint blockade and targeted therapies, the shift has gone from always doing surgery on these patients to starting them on first-line systemic therapy nowadays. And if a patient has a very good response, then obviously you might not need to do any surgery further down the line. At the same time, if the patient is massively progressive in multiple organs and multiple sites, they're no longer eligible for surgery and probably the surgery would have been futile anyways. So that is why it's now developing. It's a sort of evolution where now, nowadays we have new types of patients that are being offered for surgery. So these are the patients that had a partial response, but there is still some residual disease, or there's one lesion now becoming progressive again. So this is what we call oligoprogressive disease. And oftentimes now these patients will continue on to have surgery, but we really don't know if that is an effective approach. So in this study by the Dutch Melanoma Treatment Registry, which is a prospective registry uh, set into place when the first immune checkpoint blockade and targeted therapies were approved. So all patients receiving systemic therapy for stage melanoma in the country are captured. So we interrogated that data to see those patients that would undergo a resection after first having had a partial or a complete response to systemic therapy. And what becomes visible from that is that if with the surgery, the patient comes from a partial response into a complete response, or it's just the oligoprogressive lesion, those patients do really well and you can offer them long-term outcome. If it seems to be the tip of the iceberg because there are multiple progressive lesions and you just take out one of those, it does not seem that surgery has a favorable result and you might rather consider putting these patients on second line systemic therapy or a clinical trial. So the patients that may benefit from surgery in these situations are the patients that really have oligo lesions. So one, sometimes two lesions that are easily accessible and removable without very extensive surgery. Those are the ones that you could consider doing surgery on if they previously had a good response. If they did not have a good response on the first line systemic therapy, or if it's three or more lesions, then it's probably not sensible to do surgery on them unless it's because of symptoms. Thank you.